Hi, welcome to our show, Around Thurston County. I'm your host, Patrick Babineau. Around Thurston County is all about the people, places, and issues that make Thurston County an interesting place in which to live and work. Today, we're in downtown Olympia at the Thurston County Food Bank, one of the most important resources we have in the county to help fight hunger for low-income families. So we're really pleased to have with us its executive director, Robert Coit. Thank you, Robert, for letting us come to this great food bank resource and for sharing a little bit with our viewers uh, what the Thurston County Food Bank is all about. It's great to have you down, and we always appreciate the interest. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, let's get to some of the questions. For some viewers who may not know, could you tell us a little bit about the history and the mission of the Thurston County Food Bank? So I'll start with the mission, and it's a simple one to understand. Um, our mission is to eliminate hunger in our community. Mm -hmm. And we define our community as the urban core of Lacey, Olympia, and Tumwater, right. as well as underserved parts of Thurston County. Mm -hmm. As far as our history goes, um, this year is a special year for us, a landmark year. We're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Wow, great. And we've been serving our community for four decades. Mm -hmm. And so we started in 1972. Mm -hmm. And if people remember 1972 locally, that was the year the Boeing layoffs oh. had such a huge impact on our communities. Wow. Yeah. And the old stories of billboards that read, turn off the lights when you leave Seattle was probably <laughs> one of the endearing <laughs> memories. But not unlike today, very high unemployment. Right. 9, 10% throughout the state, 14, 15% in King County. So a host of nonprofits, supportive services were created to help support that mm -hmm. crisis, that immediate need. Mm -hmm. And food banks were one of them. Mm -hmm. So one initiative was a program called Neighbors in Need. Mm -hmm. And it was that philosophy of neighbors helping neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that's how we were founded. We became the Neighbors in Need um, affiliate, if you will, in Thurston County. Mm -hmm. And it was a faith-based initiative primarily, and our initial board was made up of members from the different churches in our community. Right. And over time, things change, and our mm -hmm. name changed to reflect more who we serve, mm -hmm. and we became a little bit more non-secular. Right. But at our core, we're still supported by the churches and the faith community. Great, wonderful. Uh, don't you have some satellite food bank branches, and where are they located, and how do they connect with this, this central operation here? It's a great question, and always um, happy to answer that. So the satellite food bank system, as well as our mobile food bank system, were created to help reduce access barriers in our community. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we have 18 satellite food bank partners and 16 mobile food bank locations. Mm -hmm. So in all, 32 additional places where people can find food when they need it, mm -hmm. in addition to our main downtown operation. Mm -hmm. Our partners are everything from a fire department with the city of Tumwater, oh, okay. as well as churches on Steamboat Island Road in Little Rock, Mm -hmm. um, in Tenino, um, community centers like Rainier, um, the Senior Center in Lacey, the Senior Center in Olympia, mm -hmm. neighborhood centers mm -hmm. run by Together Collaborative Partners, um, neighborhood centers run by Mercy Housing Services, Inc. Wow. Um, so it's a broad range mm -hmm. of partners. Mm -hmm. The primary access barrier is hours of operation. Our long-term goal is to be open seven days a week, day and night. Wow, with these different great. locations so oh, that people okay. can Fantastic. always find food when they need it. Right. Fantastic. How many people did the food bank actually help last year and who are the people that come to the food bank now? So last year we served just over 40,000 unique individuals, mm. which represents about 17 percent of Thurston County's population mm. Wow. and about 15,000 households. Mm. Um, we had over 175,000 visits last year. And that reflects how often those people use our services. Mm -hmm. As far as the face go, it runs the gamut. 50% mm -hmm. um, of our clients are children under the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the parents come, not right. the kids, to get the food. Right. Um, about 10% currently are older Americans, but that's the fastest growing segment of those we serve. It is. Wow. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then in the middle, we have are adults, if you will. And of those, 27% are employed. Wow. Um, often seasonal jobs or part-time jobs are just mm -hmm. underemployed. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, the vast majority are families, without a doubt. And how has this prolonged recession that we've lived through affected the need for food, and how has the food bank been able to respond to that? So our growth the last two or three years is primarily due to the recession mm -hmm. and not something we really planned for. Right. Um, the kind of change in demographics is pretty easy to see um, in a couple different ways. One, there's a long line at the downtown location. And anyone using the food bank for the first time is relatively easy to spot. Um, they don't make eye contact. Oh. They're uncomfortable. They're coming for the first time. I see. Their expectations are based on stories or the newspaper. They don't really know what to expect. Mm. And so we've tried to address that by having staff that actually work the line mm -hmm. to help people with that first visit, to right. help with that transition into the service world. Mm -hmm. The other big change is an increase in size of households. Mm. Um, when we say household, we mean people living in the same home, right. but they might actually be two sisters with their own families moved in together, mm -hmm. might be grandparents with grandchildren moving in together, or mm -hmm. parents with children moving back home. Wow. So they're these blended households. Right. That in part's been driven by basically mortgage issues, mm -hmm. um, inability to pay the rent, and so our household sizes are much larger than they used to be. Because smaller families or uh, different types of families have to pool their resources and live together so mm -hmm. that creates a larger household. That's one of the big changes. Um, who are the volunteers that help the food bank? I know a number of people really care about this food bank and volunteer. Who are some of these volunteers? So it's a good representation of the community we live in. So clearly we have a large number of faith-based groups that come down. Um, both as individuals as well as teams. Mm -hmm. um, a good example would be our Four Kids Backpack program on a monthly basis has Temple Beth Hatfilo as oh, a team right. that comes down. And they bring about 35 members of their synagogue mm -hmm. and build backpacks. Mm -hmm. We have a Christian church that comes down with their youth. Mm -hmm. We have high schools that come down as groups, generally service clubs like Key Club or the right. leadership team. Mm -hmm. um, we have some workplace um, employment training programs here. Um, we have a large group of retirees that volunteer. Mm -hmm. And they all have a great range of backgrounds, doctors, attorneys, truck drivers, mm -hmm. um, store managers, retired state employees, retired educators, mm -hmm. pretty much you name it, we've got that experience in the wow, house. Great. Um, do you work with other agencies downtown that also help the poor? We do, as a matter of fact. Um, there is a really strong peer support network for other helping community members. Um, and most of it's around making appropriate referrals. Mm -hmm. um, a person that comes to the food bank doesn't come just for food. They right. have other challenges. Mm -hmm. And our job is to make sure we can help them access other resources in the community. Mm -hmm. um, we focus first on food resources, but often they come with housing needs or medical needs. Mm -hmm. And so having strong positive relationships with our other um, nonprofit community members, our peers, helps these families, helps these individuals be stable, help them out of the cycle. Um, we're also blessed to have as our next door neighbor, the Union Gospel Mission. Mm -hmm. And you know, it comes with all the pros and cons of being neighbors, um, but our clients are their clients, their clients are our clients. Mm -hmm. And so we work collaboratively in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. Great, right. So if someone comes and they need food, you provide that, but if they need medical assistance or, or housing referral or something, you're able to refer them to the appropriate agency. That's exactly correct. I actually have a staff person, that's her primary function. In addition, she can actually help them sign up for the basic food program, what's mm -hmm. known as food stamps in other parts of the country. Right. Um, as well as help her si people sign up for other resources. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're doing some referrals to help people get um, refrigerators. Oh, okay. And that's a partnership with Puget Sound Energy that has a grant program right now. Mm -hmm. So if you have an older, inefficient refrigerator, they're willing to swap it out with a new, very energy efficient mm -hmm. refrigerator. Mm -hmm. There's obviously guidelines and rules, but it's in our own best interest to help people get all the resources they can. Right. And also, if there are other, uh, if people go to other agencies that help low income folks, uh, they refer to them to 
you into this food bank, right? It's true. In fact, about 20, 25 percent of our clients are referred to us from other support services. So there's a great sense of collaboration in the area. I believe that to be true. In Wonderful. fact, it's necessary anymore. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, you mentioned something about uh, senior citizens. We have a, a large senior citizen population here in Thurston County, and it's projected to keep growing. Uh, how are seniors involved in the food bank? Well, you know, from a volunteer standpoint, they're probably our core volunteers that we see on a routine daily basis. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the folks we see on a weekly or a monthly mm -hmm. um, schedule mm -hmm. um, and really they're unpaid staff right um, they actually supplant if you will paid positions mm -hmm. we don't really have entry-level positions in the food bank mm -hmm. those are all filled with people willing to donate their time wonderful everything from people that help put together bank deposits answer mm -hmm. the telephone mm -hmm. provide the direct client services sort mm -hmm. the food all of those roles are filled with volunteers mm -hmm. the weekend work the evening work the food drives that allows us to bring in the general community mm -hmm. but the day-to-day -day, monday through friday mm -hmm. that's done by retired seniors and you mentioned something a little earlier that up to, did you say 10% of the client population are seniors? Currently. Wow. And I would say this year it'll probably be closer to 14% as 14 an example. 14%, wow. Mm -hmm. And is there a reason for that? Why is that happening, do you think? Well, one is there's a growing population boom on the horizon. Right. And the other issue, in my opinion, is just fixed incomes, not able to mm -hmm. keep up with rising food costs mm -hmm. primarily. Right. Um, and when you look at food costs as it relates to inflation, it's much higher than the standard rate. Mm -hmm. And in fact, here in the near future, we'll all be negatively impacted with rising meat, poultry, and fish prices driven by the drought and oh, grains. That's right. That's happened in the certain parts of the Midwest mm -hmm. and the South. Yeah, mm -hmm. Wow. So um, senior population that is on fixed income is particularly vulnerable to that. So you've seen an actual increase in the percentage of people that are being helped by Thurston County Food Bank that are senior citizens. No doubt about it. Wow. Okay. And um, don't you have a new program with local restaurants who want to help out, who want to help the, the food bank? W what is that program? So it's going to roll out. December, the time of this show. Mm -hmm. um, we've been playing around with pieces and elements of it for the last couple months. Mm -hmm. But the primary task has been to remodel part of the facility to put in a certified kitchen. Oh, okay. And the basic idea is to solicit support from restaurants, caterers, institutional cookers, mm -hmm. um, hospitals, schools, um, hotel, hospitality right. industry. And they generally donate food in large pans or uh -huh. large yes, quantities. that's right. Which is kind of hard to give to a household of two. Yes. So in the past, we haven't really been able to accept those, mm. at least not to the quantity available. Mm -hmm. And with the certified kitchen, we're going to repack those down to household size. I see. So the whole point of that is to take these donations, bring them in, um, repackage them into household side and then make that available to individuals. Wonderful. And did you get funding or some kind of resource to help create that kitchen apparatus? That you're Sure. Um, it's actually a collaborative project with mm -hmm. Thurston County, both waste management and environmental health. Mm -hmm. um, it's a collaborative grant written to the Department of Ecology. Wow. Okay. And sort of one of the prime motivators is the idea that the United States wastes a lot of food. Yes. The USDA says around 45 percent of the food produced gets thrown away. Really? It's that high now? It is very high. Wow. And so this is one way to divert food from the waste stream. Mm -hmm. We're going to call this program Restaurant Rescue. Yeah. Because the idea is to, <laughs> you know, rescue this food and make right. it available to individuals first. To people first. that need it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, and it's a strong proposal. It includes um, a vehicle with a refrigeration unit so that mm -hmm. we pick it up, handle mm -hmm. it appropriately in transit, keep mm -hmm. it frozen mm -hmm. and chilled here and distribute it that way. Because mm -hmm. food safety is primary concern. That's right. right. Wonderful. Um, so... The food bank offers, from what I understand when I was looking at your website, and, and what is your website again? What's that address? It's thurstoncountyfoodbank.org. Great. And that's a great website for people to check out. Um, it mentioned that you offered uh, canned foods, and you also offered, at times, fresh produce. Uh, do 
local farms in the area, because there are a lot of local farmers, um, do they work with the food bank? And if they do, how do they work with it? So produce has been a focus for the food bank for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Um, four years ago, I would say the amount of produce we distributed was roughly 120 to 130,000 pounds. Mm, this wow. past year, we gave out close to a half a million pounds of produce, mm -hmm. and I would anticipate that this year will be close to 600 or maybe even 700,000 pounds of That's produce. That's great. And it's a number of different strategies. Mm -hmm. One is to increase donations from local stores. Right. Um, a strong gleaning program where we actually go to local farms mm -hmm. and harvest their unwanted, unmarketable produce. Mm -hmm. In simplest terms, not every carrot is perfectly straight. Right. And a <laughs> farmer may not be able to sell that or have a strong market for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's certainly edible and, and nutritious. Without a doubt. Right. The other real advantage to that is a lot of our local agriculture are um, CSA growers, mm -hmm. community supported agriculture, so they have a fixed season. Right. But if it's a good year and the weather's been kind, mm -hmm. there's still produce product out in the fields to harvest mm -hmm. after their season ends. Mm -hmm. And they've been very generous in allowing us to go out and harvest what's still in the fields. Wonderful. And that's brought in a lot of produce to the program. Tough part is the winter months. Right. And so last year, we um, actually did a winter produce drive at local stores, the co-op, for example, Westside Top Food, some of the Albertsons, where we were outside of stores with a wish list of fresh produce, mm -hmm. encouraging people to purchase that and donate it to the food bank. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you mentioned the, the winter. What's the need like during the holiday season? So demand actually goes up during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And it changes in nature a little bit. Um, one of the things that always drives hunger in our community is the school system. Mm -hmm. We don't really think about it or realize it, how important school meal programs are to children. Right. So whenever there's a vacation, whether it's summer vacation, the winter break, mm -hmm. spring break, it puts a big demand on a household because they lose the support of the free and reduced school oh, lunch and breakfast right. program. Right. So we see a strong shift in dynamics whenever school is out mm -hmm. with an increase in the number of families that ask for assistance, mm -hmm. particularly during the summer months, but also very true during the winter break and wow. spring break. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big shifts. Mm -hmm. And the weather drives things too. People don't have gardens or they don't have the resources they might have as part of support. Mm -hmm. So we actually see increased number of visits during the winter months. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, if people want to volunteer and help out, how can they get in touch with you and the food bank? So the best place to start is the website. Mm -hmm. It gives people a sense of our organization, the types of programs we run. Right. And that's always helpful when you want to volunteer. Maybe you have a passion for children, so you want to volunteer in one of the programs that mm -hmm. cater to children specifically. Or you have a passion for produce and you want to help us do different things to bring in more produce into right. the food bank. Um, we do orientations slash tours one to two times a month. Okay, great. And the best way to find out when the next scheduled one is to send an email to our volunteer manager. Mm -hmm. And her email address is volunteers mm -hmm. at thurstoncountyfoodbank.org. Great. And there's a link on the website as well that will get a message to us. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the ways that people can help provide money, actual uh, uh, funding, to the food bank through uh, payroll deductions? Uh, uh, and what are some of these programs that you have? So the most common ways that people can give through payroll deduction is if you're a state employee through the state's combined fund drive. Right. And that's a strong resource and we're blessed and we're usually in the top five or ten agencies um, campaign wide mm -hmm. because of the strong support of state employees. It's also important to realize that as a retired state employee, you can also give through payroll deduction through the combined fund drive. Mm -hmm. Not to be outdone, the federal government has its own equivalent called the Combined Federated Campaign, oh. where a federal employee can also donate through payroll deduction mm -hmm. to local charities. Mm -hmm. And that's true if you're a post office employee, a man or woman in uniform, oh, that's right. or any one of a dozen different federal agencies in our community like 
Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. um, Rural Resources. Mm -hmm. There are federal employees even in Olympia. That's right. That's right. And then the last is, of course, the most common one for those of us in the private sector, and that's the United Way. Mm -hmm. And as a United Way member agency, we can all benefit through payroll deduction. Mm -hmm. Anyone that works in a business can contact the United Way, and they'd be happy to work through the process to allow payroll deduction in that respect. Right. And the United Way of Thurston County is a great organization. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading on your website that your administrative cost was around 3%, which is astoundingly fantastic. How do you do that? Well, it's a great question. So currently this year it's 2%. 2%, wow. 2%. It's even lower. It is even lower. Um, and it varies a little bit from year to year, but mm -hmm. the highest is generally 3 mm -hmm. So there's really three main reasons. One of them is volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, we'll take anyone's skill set, mm -hmm. whether it's a high-functioning accountant or someone that's done accounting their whole life and it's the last thing they want to do <laughs> is accounting. But some of our administrative functions are done by volunteers mm -hmm. and that reduces our administrative overhead without right. a doubt. Um, basically the administrative overhead in the Thurston County Food Banks myself and a bookkeeper. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, a second real fact is we don't do fundraising events. Mm -hmm. um, no disrespect to auctions, they're a great way to raise money and awareness, mm -hmm. but they're expensive to put on. They can. And there's a That's lot right. of cost associated with doing that, right. which then adds to your administrative overhead. Uh -huh. I see. So fundraising costs can sometimes you know, be a negative in the world of administrative costs. So mm -hmm. we've chosen not to do that. Mm -hmm. Most of our funding is through these annual campaigns done by the United Way, the Combined Fund Drive, and the Combined Federated Campaign. Mm -hmm. So we try to partner with those organizations to bring funding into the food bank. Mm -hmm. And of course, strong community support. So volunteers are very important. People who are willing to come and provide their time and their energy and their skill on, on any level and people who can uh, either provide a one-time or a repeated uh, financial contribution through these various programs that you're talking about really help make this happen. One of the things I often write in a thank you card is that we could not serve so many without the support of the community. Mm -hmm. And that really is the fact. Mm -hmm. The volunteer support is phenomenal. It's what keeps our admin costs down. Mm -hmm. We don't have entry level positions. My staff manage volunteers. They don't do the work themselves. Mm -hmm. And I can always tell when someone's a little shorthanded with volunteers because there's a little more stress in their eyes. Mm -hmm because we rely on volunteers to get the work done. Wonderful. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers today? I think just the always all important thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we really couldn't serve so many. 170,000 visits last year. That's 170,000 bags of food in another way. Wow. We sent out just shy of six million pounds of food last year through our main location in the system as a whole. A half of that was donated by the members of our community, the businesses in our community. Mm -hmm. um, we're making a difference every day and it's because of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's fantastic. Uh, we always ask at the end of our shows, um, what are one or two of the things you like about living in Thurston County? I guess one of the things I like about living in Thurston County is our unique, eclectic, and diverse nature. Yes. So one example of that would be a community where both the procession of the species and Lake Fair can live side by side mm -hmm. and be equally valued by different members. That's right. And I have to be frank, the other thing I like, it is the state capital. Mm -hmm. To some, it feels like a big city. To me, it's a small town, and mm -hmm. I dearly love that aspect of our community. Mm -hmm. You do get the opportunity to meet people, mm -hmm. um, get to know people, and over time, pretty much everyone, if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, thank you very much for uh, spending some time today with us uh, about the Thurston County Food Bank. We really appreciate that. Thank you, Patrick. Um, the Thurston County Food Bank here in Olympia and its satellite programs and its volunteers is a very important part and a major way that we help fight hunger among low-income people here in Thurston County. 
We are so happy to have been able to spend some time with Robert Coit, who is the executive director. And we'd like you please to check out uh, their website. Uh, they have a lot of things going on and a lot of uh, cool volunteers involved in this process. Thanks for watching our show today. Uh, you can find us on Comcast Cable Channel 22 twice weekly, Mondays at 6.30 p.m. and Fridays at 5 p.m. You can also find our, us on our Around Thurston County Facebook page and on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Around Thurston County. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.